We're going to move into a new topic now, which is sorting algorithms. Sorting is a fundamental problem in computer science, and there has been a tremendous amount of work on developing good sorting algorithms. In this video, we are going to introduce and motivate the sorting problem, talk about how you can sort in C++, and look at some applications of sorting. Let's start off with the definition. A sequence a0, a1, up to an-1 is sorted in ascending order if a0 is at most a1, which is at most a2, etc., all the way up to an-1. So an example of a sequence sorted in ascending order uh, would be 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 7, 8. A sequence is sorted in descending order if a0 is at least as large as a1, which is at least as large as a2, etc. So an example of a sequence sorted in descending order would be 8, 7, 7, 5, 3, 2, 1. In the sorting problem, we are given an arbitrary array and we wish to either sort it in ascending order or descending order. Usually in the examples, I'm just going to focus on sorting in ascending order. In order to sort an array, we need a comparison function to be defined on its elements. That is a function that tells us if one element is less than another or not. If the elements are integers, then we can just use the normal ordering of the integers. If the elements of the array are strings, a natural comparison function is alphabetical order. For pairs of integers, we could, for example, say that the pair a comma b is less than the pair c comma d, if and only if a is less than c, or in the case that a is equal to c, then if b is less than d. So these are just examples of uh, default comparison functions that we have on, on different types of objects. Before we get into sorting algorithms, let me tell you how to sort in C++, so, which is pretty easy. There's a library function called standard sort, which takes as arguments two iter iterators and a comparison function. When there's a default comparison function, then we don't need to provide this third argument of the comparison function. So if we have a vector of integers here called intvec, I can sort the entire vector by passing standard sort an iterator to the beginning and an iterator to the end of the string. In this case, I don't need to pass a comparison function if I want to sort it in ascending order. Uh, just the default comparison function will do that. If I did want to sort it in descending order, then I would have to pass a comparison function. So in this case, we can just tell the sort function to use the greater than function rather than to do the sorting rather than the less than function. And most types that you'll use already have a default comparison uh, that is the one that you want. For example, for standard strings, the default comparison is just alphabetical order. For pairs of integers, the default comparison is the one I talked about on the last slide. If you do write your own class, though, uh, and you want to sort objects of your class, then you will need to uh, you know, write your own comparison function for, for that class and pass standard sort that comparison function. So sorting is a very fundamental algorithmic task, and it's often used as a subroutine in solving other problems. So we can even use it for our favorite problem, determining if an array contains a duplicate element. So here's how you could do that. First, you sort the array. If, they are, if there are duplicate elements, then they're going to appear next to each other in the sorted array. So then we can check this with one more pass through the array. So here's that code in C++. We sort the vector in the first line, and then we iterate through the array, checking if the ith element is the same as the i minus first element. If ever they're the same, then we found a duplicate and we can return true. Otherwise, 
If the for loop completes, then we return false. And you can find this code up on God Godbolt. The sorting solution to contains duplicate turns out to work quite well. The sorting algorithm is given here by the yellow line. The pink line is a solution based on using a hash table. And the blue line is a solution based on balanced binary search trees. We'll talk about hash tables and bi balanced binary search trees later in the course. But you can see here that the sorting solution compares favorably on inputs from size about 10,000 up to 70,000, which is shown in the picture here. And this actually quite surprised me. I wasn't expecting this before I did this benchmark. So here's another example problem, uh, which I found in the book Cracking the Coding Interview. This is problem 1.2 from Cracking the Coding Interview. So we're given two strings, and we want to determine if one is a permutation of the other. So for example, cab is a permutation of ABC. So how could you solve this problem? Can you think about a way to solve this problem using sorting? Okay, I'll leave that as a puzzle for you.